The night was cool, but that was to be expected of a night in October. It was silent, with only a baby's cry being heard echoing through the air. It all seemed calm, but a subtle, eerie feeling was about. It's at this point that the Ninetales attacks. Having been freed from its fleshy prison by a masked man of great ambition, it goes on a killing spree through the village. That is, until the fourth Hokage appears. Having defeated the masked man, he must now defeat the Ninetales. The only way he feels he can do so without killing it is to seal it away into the body of a baby. Having deflected a claw from Kurama with the help of Kushina, he prepares the Reaper Death Seal only to double take. Having finally had a moment to look at the child. Wait, are those bushy eyebrows? Welcome to the Amagi. Before we begin, we publish a new video every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. The Amagi's reach stretches beyond just this channel, so if you're a fan of us, please consider subscribing to our other channels and following us on all of our social media. Help us reach our goal of passing 100,000 followers on all of our accounts by the end of the year. It's no secret that Rock Lee is one of the most popular characters in the Naruto series. There have been multiple polls out for favored Naruto characters, and in each one, Rock Lee has placed very high. In the very first and second polls, he placed fifth, just to mark how much people love him, and after so many other polls, he collectively ranks at ninth place of favorite Naruto characters. Bushy Brows is loved so much that he even got a comedy-based spin-off show that is pretty dang funny. In the main series, Rock Lee serves as comedy relief, which is one reason why we love him. But another reason why we love him is because of how much of an underdog story he gives us. A ninja who has zero aptitude for ninjutsu. He can't do the same techniques others can, like Shadow Clone Jutsu. Come to think of it, how did he graduate? I assume it has to do with his Taijutsu prowess. But even still, he doesn't let his inability to use fancy techniques stop him. Despite his handicap, he has become one of the most powerful ninja in the entire Hidden Leaf, which is one reason why we love him. He shows us that anything is possible if you try hard enough. Almost as important as believing in yourself is the will to work, even when it gets hard. And that was one thing we could all learn from the Leaf Village's noble savage. But besides all this mushy stuff, he was also just flat out entertaining to watch. And most of us wished we had more Rock Lee. Well, today we will get more of him. More specifically, we're going to see how the series would have played out if Rock Lee had been the main character instead of Naruto. So without further ado, let's jump straight in. Our series starts out with a boy who was bullied. Not just because he's the Ninetales Jinchuriki, but also because he shows no aptitude for Jutsu. He can't even cast a single Shadow Clone. But this doesn't dampen his dreams in the least. He continues to train and try as hard as he possibly can. He'll show them all. This catches the eyes of a certain Jonin with a bowl cut. Might Guy would see so much potential in this boy. So he introduces himself, and the young boy introduces himself as Rock Lee. Through Might Guy's help, and through demonstrating his capabilities in Taijutsu, Lee is allowed to graduate from the academy. He ends up placed on the same team as Neji Hyuga and Tenten. He declares he will be a great ninja despite his inability to use Jutsu. A declaration that prompts a laugh from Neji. How silly, a ninja who can't use ninjutsu? Preposterous. Nonetheless, Rock Lee persisted and even stated that one day he would challenge his peer and defeat him and prove that hard work can overcome natural genius. Might Guy loved the concept and encouraged it, knowing that a natural rivalry would help them boost their strength by attempting to outdo the other. Given that we're making Rock Lee the main protagonist, we will be basically forcing Team 7 and Team 3 to trade spots. They both maintain their history with the exception of Naruto and Rock Lee. Naruto lives a rather peaceful life and isn't hated because he isn't the Jinchuriki. Rock Lee, on the other hand, does, but it's not enough to overcome Rock Lee's pure optimism. And besides, the only friends he really needs are his team. This wouldn't change Lee and Guy's relationship in the slightest, so that's all fine. Now let's move on to the first arc, the Land of Waves arc. After a bunch of low-rank missions, not much more than saving cats from trees, Team 3 gets a C-rank mission, which soon proves to be less of a C-rank and more of an A-rank when they're attacked by the Demon Brothers. Neji is the first to notice this with his Byakugan, and would defend Lee with his 8 trigrams palm rotation, an absolute defense. Tenten -ten would defend Tazuna, and Might Guy would step in to take down the Demon Brothers. Lee would bow and thank Neji for his help, to which Neji would reply that if a ninja can't defend himself, then he shouldn't be a ninja. Guy tells Lee not to worry, and that there will be plenty of time in the future for him to prove to Neji that he can defend himself. 
They're later ambushed by Zabuza of the Hidden Mist and proceed to fight. Might Guy faces off against him, and even though he isn't as fast as Kakashi in perception, he does have the strength and technique in weapons to even stand up to one of the Seven Swordsmen of the Mist. After all, Might Guy's predecessor, Might Dai, managed to beat the Seven Ninja Swordsmen of the Mist, including Zabuza's predecessor, which is only natural. However, Haku still shows up and claims Zabuza's body in the same way he did before. Might Guy would have to rest up a bit after this, having opened up the third gate of life, which means that he's better served recuperating from the battle. But during this time, Rock Lee takes the initiative to train on his own. It would there that he meets Haku, whom he mistakes for a girl. And upon learning he's a boy, he would ask if he'd like to train together, to which Haku would kindly decline. Eventually, Might Guy would recover and be fit for duty. However, Zabuza is alive. Not only that, but Haku is there to help him. He traps Neji and Lee in the demonic mirroring ice crystals which Neji would quickly figure out using his Byakugan, and using 8 trigrams palm rotation he would manage to defend himself and Lee from the Senbon. But Neji can't keep it up forever as such a technique causes fatigue quickly due to expelling so much chakra. But Rock Lee is also here. He manages to open his third gate of life, which is strong enough that it bursts the mirrors surrounding them, forcing Haku out. Lee would proceed to use the reverse lotus technique, which smashes his mask to oblivion as soon as his face hits the ground. Ten Ten covers her face, knowing that Lee has just caused massive damage to the bridge, but Tezuna assures her it's better than dying. Lee would stand and look down and recognize him as the boy he met earlier. At this point, Haku is unconscious and unable to do anything, meaning he wouldn't be able to stop Might Guy from killing Zabuza. However, when Gato's men show up and begin to abuse the body of Zabuza, Haku stands and unleashes his full abilities on them, managing to kill Gato and a few of his men, causing them to run, leaving Haku to die. Lee laments this, but Might Guy consoles his team, telling them that this is what the ninja world was, and that sometimes justice is a thing that may differ between people. Rock Lee then asks what the difference between a good and bad guy is, and Guy would say that this is a good question, and not every instance is black and white, and that the best one can do is fight for what they believe in. The bridge is repaired and finished, and then named the Sublime Beast of Prey Bridge. But for short, just the Sublime Bridge, because the other is a mouthful. Rock Lee is given some time to recuperate from his opening of the third gate. They return to the leaf where Might Guy, heavily impressed with his team, allows them to enter the tuning exams. However, at around the time of joining, Rock Lee hears that the last Uchiha, Sasuke, is going to be joining. Unwilling to wait, he appears before Sasuke and demands a challenge. Naruto is overly jealous of him and attempts to attack Lee, but Lee sends him sprawling. Sasuke takes the challenge and he faces off against him, but he's outmatched. Sasuke can see every move that Lee can make, but his body isn't fast enough to react to it, giving Lee the advantage. Lee attempts to use the front lotus on Sasuke, but before he can, he's caught by Might Guy, who punches him for recklessly using this ability. However, they quickly make up, and Guy forces Lee to do laps around the practice range as punishment. The first exam, a test. Neji passes quickly due to his prodigious nature, as well as his Byakugan. Ten Ten seems to have some issues, but keeps going. Rock Lee has many issues, but his drive forward and complete faith in himself pushes him ahead, and his guts are what allow him to pass. Then comes the Forest of Death. With Neji on their team, they managed to get the second scroll that they needed to pass, but Lee discovers Sakura being teamed up on as Sasuke and Naruto are knocked out, so he comes to protect her. He had a crush on her, so of course he'll stick his neck out. They pass this test too, and then comes the third test, the exhibitions. As said earlier, we're replacing Team 7 with Team 3, meaning the battles might look a bit different. Ten Ten vs. Eno, in which Ten Ten actually comes out on top, Rock Lee vs. Kiba, and Rock Lee comes out on top. This also means that Naruto will face off against Gara and get utterly destroyed. Neji also faces off against Yoroi, and Sakura gets knocked out by Tamari, who then goes on to defeat Ten Ten as well. After these battles, they receive a month off to train. Rock Lee wonders how to get stronger and recalls what that ninja Mizuki said about him being the Ninetales host. He asks Might Guy about it, and Might Guy tells him it's a power he should be careful with. Lee asks how to learn to use his power, and Guy would tell him that the best he can do is ask the Hokage about it. Lee would seek an audience with the third Hokage, Hirazin, and ask him about it. Hirazin would later refer him to Jiraiya, who had just entered the village and was found spying on a girl's bathhouse. Lee would find him and introduce himself and ask to be taught. Jiraiya is skeptical at first, but upon hearing that Lee was referred to him by the third Hokage, and that Lee is the host of the Nine Tails, he would help him. For a while they would train, and Jiraiya would be confused how a Genin close to Chunin could be a ninja without knowing how to perform ninjutsu. 
he could not perform even a simple shadow clone, which made things very hard for him. So instead, they focus on controlling tailed beast mode. Lee manages to master the initial state as well as version 1 while he trains with Jiraiya. He eventually meets Kurama as well, and the two don't really hit it off. Kurama makes fun of Lee's inability to use Jutsu, but continues to offer Chakra, knowing the seal will slowly weaken. By the time the month ends, Lee has grown to master version 1 and returns to the Junin exams, where Rock Lee would get his rematch with Sasuke, and Rock Lee would push Sasuke to his limits, to the point that he ends up accidentally awakening his cursed seal, which Rock Lee has issues with. This doesn't last long, as the officials come out to suppress the seal and declare Rock Lee the winner. Neji faces off against Gara and defeats him. However, before Lee and Neji can have their match, a smoke bomb goes off in the Hokage's office and Kabuto puts the whole crowd under Genjutsu. Sasuke is the only one not to fall asleep. But Sakura eventually wakes up Naruto and tells him to follow Sasuke to help him. They slowly begin to awaken everyone else, including Lee and Neji. Sasuke and Naruto fail to stop Gara as he unleashes Shukaku. This is too much for Naruto to beat alone, and so he falls, likely being killed by Shukaku in a worst case scenario. However, Gara does not return to the leaf, and instead escapes back to Sunagakure with Konkuro and Tamari. Meanwhile, the third Hokage dies fighting Orochimaru as originally shown. After the Chunin exams, Rock Lee is sent with Jiraiya to recruit Tsunade. Before reaching their destination, Lee is approached by Itachi and Kisame, who plan to take the Ninetales from him. At around this time, Sasuke appears to kill his brother, but is so freaking out class that we get a meme of it. Sasuke is hospitalized after his run-in with Tsukiyomi, but Lee and Jiraiya get out scot-free. Lee and Jiraiya later find Tsunade and attempt to convince her to come back to the Leaf with them to be the next Hokage, but she doesn't want to. Unbeknownst to them, Orochimaru has approached her to heal his arms, but she doesn't plan to. Instead, she wants to kill Orochimaru, but this comes to light, and Jiraiya and Lee help her face off against Orochimaru and Kabuto. Lee awakens his fifth gate and adds that power to that of his version 1 chakra cloak, which gives him incredible strength. Power enough that he manages to kill Kabuto in battle after performing the reverse lotus on him. However, this injures Lee, giving him compound fractures. Tsunade manages to heal him, but Orochimaru escapes. Lee returns to the village and takes some time off to recover. However, it isn't long until Sakura states that Sasuke has left the village to join the Sound 4 with Orochimaru. A five-man recovery team is formed, consisting of Shikamaru, Kiba, Lee, Choji, and Neji, and they go after Sasuke, but they're held back by the Sound 4. Due to Gara never having had a change of heart, the Suna Ninja never appear to help them, meaning that more than likely, Shikamaru and Kiba would die in battle against their opponents. In the end, the recovery squad loses Kiba and Shikamaru, and the Sound 4 lose Jirobo and Kitamaru. Lee continues on to find Sasuke, but is stopped by Kimimaro, who is stronger than the entire Sound 4 combined. Lee uses his version 1 cloak as well as his chakra gates and manages to kill Kimimaro. However, by the time he catches up to Sasuke, he's become rather fatigued for being forced to open his gates. This means Sasuke would manage to beat Lee, but just barely, and then escape from Konoha. They were brought back to the village where Choji and Neji had managed to be saved. However, it was too late for Shikamaru, Kiba, and Akamaru. And that being said, Sakon, Ukon, and Toyuya escaped and met up with Sasuke and made it back to Orochimaru's lair. Lee decides that the best thing to do is to continue training with Jiraiya and Gai to grow stronger. He's sad to hear that Gai cannot come with him to train with Jiraiya, and Gai tells him that it's okay, and that he knows that Lee will continue to train with Taijutsu. Then comes the two year skip. Lee returns to the village with Jiraiya having managed to gain the edge on his training, and thus managed to master the version 2 cloak. Besides this, keeping with his promise to Gai, he continued to train with his taijutsu, and even managed to increase his limit from 5 to 6 gates. At this point, Rock Lee is freaking overpowered. His version 2 cloak on top of his 6 gates and his natural strength he would have gained means Lee becomes a monster of a powerhouse physically that would not be too dissimilar from Naruto in Kurama Chakra mode with Sage mode on top of that. This means that Lee utterly smokes most people and is only really surpassed by Might Guy in his 8th gate and possibly the first Hokage, Hashirama Senju, and by extension, Tentails Jinchuriki Madara. It is then that Gara is killed and has his tailed beast stripped from him. Lee and the rest of Team 3 are sent to investigate and have to fight against Sasori, where it's revealed that there was a plan to be a meeting between Sasori and Orochimaru at the Tenchi Bridge. They report back to the Leaf Village and Yamato and Sai are sent with them to the bridge. However, Orochimaru knows it's a trick and attacks. Lee comes out of nowhere and attacks him and Orochimaru is knocked back. Given how much Lee has grown, Orochimaru knows that there's no beating Lee like this and attempts to flee, but Sai follows him, feigning defection to be able to join him. Lee and the others follow quickly. 
Sai enters and attempts to kill Sasuke as per his mandate, but fails and is instead killed by Sasuke. Lee and the rest of Team 3 show up and find Sasuke and the remnants of the Sound 4 where they proceed to fight. However, Lee has increased his power so far that he effortlessly destroys the rest of the Sound 4 and then comes for Sasuke. Lee manages to subdue Sasuke and bring him back to the village where he's imprisoned. At some point after, Itachi dies of his illness, costing Sasuke the chance at his revenge. During this time, the Akatsuki suppression arc occurs, and Asuma Sarutobi is killed by Hidan. However, with the help of Lee and Team 3, they manage to bring down Hidan and Kakuzu. Jiraiya is also sent to the village hidden in the rain, and there is killed. Pain then moves on the leaf, where they're immediately stopped by Rock Lee, who at this point is so broken that even these six paths of pain don't stand much of a chance. Imagine 4th Shinobi World War Naruto just prior to getting 6 Paths Sage Mode facing off against Pain. Yeah. That is what's happening in comparison to Power. Nagato is later found by the Ninja of the Leaf and is killed alongside Hidan. Tsunade in this version of the story actually does not go comatose since these 6 Paths of Pain didn't manage to do much damage. After this, a 5 Kage summit is called between all 5 great ninja nations, and there they elect to fight the Akatsuki as one, and Tsunade is elected the leader. Tobi shows up and demands the Nine Tails, but is refused and instead declares the 4th Shinobi World War. Due to this, they send Lee away to train with Killer B. In actuality, they're trying to keep him away from the war in hopes of keeping him from getting his tailed beast stolen. While there, Lee finds Killer B, but B is off put by Lee's quirkiness, or his formal manners. B tries to help Lee loosen up, but all Lee really wants to do is train. B admires his drive and decides to help him, so long as he can manage to loosen up a bit. There, he tells Lee to sit in front of the waterfall and face off against the darkness in his heart, but there is no darkness, because he's Rock Lee. He is pure boy. The only darkness that I can think of that he would carry within himself would be his inability to use jutsu, making him worse off than other ninja. But given that right now Lee is one of the strongest ninja in the village, I doubt he carries that anymore. While in the temple, he decides to take energy from Kurama, and with the help of Killer B and Gyuki, as well as his six gates awakened, manages to take the chakra and awaken Ninetales chakra mode, becoming even more broken. B informs him to be careful of the technique, as Kurama can also take his energy. However, Lee feels that the war is raging and knows that he needs to hurry back. Guy tells him he needs to stay, but he convinces Guy to let him go based on how strong he's gotten. Guy decides it's a good idea and they all head for the battlefront. They reach the battlefield where the Ten Tails waits inert. Lee awakens his Nine Tails chakra mode and attempts to fight Toby, but fails to deal much damage as Toby can use Kamui. He can't take the power of the Nine Tails right now, but that's okay. He has a plan. Having used Orochimaru, he managed to reincarnate the Gold and Silver Brothers, each of which possessed some of the Ninetales Chakra. He feeds that to the Tentails and it comes alive. Obito absorbs it and becomes the Tentails Jinchuriki. However, to deal with this, Rock Lee opens up the Sixth Gate and uses it alongside his Chakra Mode and faces off against Obito. Meanwhile, Neji is just flat out stunned. He looks back on how he believed that Lee would never go anywhere, and now he was the only one who could stand against the Tentails and his Jinchuriki. Lee manages to take the Ten Tails out of Obito and defeat him. Obito dies from the loss of the Ten Tails and the beasts are freed. The rest of the Zetsu are eventually weeded out and defeated, and with that, the end of the series occurs. From here, I could only see a flash forward in which Lee would have to fight against Teneri to protect the Earth, as well as Lee eventually marrying Ten Ten and having Metal Lee. Yes, I'm also one of those who believes Metal's mother is Ten Ten, and I'm not alone. You can also see Rock Lee becoming the Hokage. Oh, I would love to see that. Bull cut up on Hokage Rock. But what do you think? How do you think the series would pan out if the main character were Rock Lee? I certainly think it would be interesting. But you know what else is interesting to me? Your opinions. Leave them in the comments below and let us know what you think. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to be notified when new content like this drops. Peace.